I'm a good friend of one of the families whose son drowned off the Sheboygan Pier last Sunday. And I was with them for a while yesterday morning. I couldn't uh, be there for the funeral because of a wedding. But I went to the wake for a while, and, and I was talking to the mom. She said to me, you know, a lifelong friend of mine uh, gave me some good advice. She said, in order to get past this, you need to walk along the shore of Lake Michigan and allow the lake to become your friend once again. And she said, while I know that is good advice, it's just too soon. I can't do it yet. No matter how good a parent one might be, sometimes life gives our kids scorpions and snakes. No matter how good God is, sometimes bad things happen to absolutely wonderful people. And in those moments, we have two choices. We can either conclude that God isn't good after all, because how would God allow this to happen? Or we can go to that God and let God's love and compassion wash over us and help us through the darkest moments of our lives. Now there are many people who haven't talked to a parent in years. It is their response to a very painful experience early in their life with a scorpion or a snake. And it's the same with God. There are many folks who have not talked to God for a long time because something tragic has happened to them. And whether it's a parent or God or anyone else for that matter, who is the most hurt? The one that harbors the resentment and clings to it tenaciously? Or the one who is simply waiting for the other to come home? One year at Christmas when I was a kid, I was probably in about fifth grade, I would say, I wanted a piano. I desperately wanted a piano for Christmas. And so I got up on Christmas morning, and I don't know how I thought my parents or Santa were going to get the piano in the living room while I was sleeping, but I still held out hope. Um, and uh, I got up on Christmas morning, and what gift was there by the tree? A brand new bike. I was very disappointed. But my parents knew me well enough to recognize that I lacked the self-discipline that would lead me to practice the piano every day, whereas I didn't need any self-discipline at all to go ride on my bike for three hours around town every day. And so what I thought was a scorpion, that bike, was abs ab actually a marvelous gift. Sometimes God's gifts also aren't appreciated until years later, until hindsight. And then we say, that's why that happens. And I thought it was a snake and it turned out to be a gift. At the wedding reception on Friday, the groom was giving a little talk at dinner and he said, you know, 
When I graduated from high school, my dream was to go to Madison. I wanted to go to Madison with all my heart and soul, but I didn't get accepted. So I ended up having to go to La Crosse. But he said, it was at La Crosse where I met the love of my life. Prayer takes on many dimensions. In the Genesis reading, Abraham reminds us that sometimes prayer is a bargaining with God. If you do this, I'll do this. If I do this, will you do this? And so on. And interestingly, though, Abraham is bargaining on the behalf of others, not on his own behalf. He's praying for the people of Sodom. Is there any way you can spare them? Sometimes our bargaining with God is out of a deep concern for people we love. Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, says, we're not going to ever really understand the mystery of salvation and the way in which life unfolds before us, but in the end, it will all turn out according to God's plan. Sometimes prayer is a prayer of hope and trust that God is with us. And in the gospel, we have the neighbor begging his friend for some bread, again, not for himself, but for his friend who was hungry. And oftentimes our prayer is simply begging God to feed the hungry. And all in all, it's simply communication. It's simply conversation with God and how reassuring it is to believe in a God who always listens to us no matter what my state of mind might be.